Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about another group of kingdom fungi and that is Ascomycetes. unicellular or multicellular fungi unicellular would include yeast and multicellular would include penicillium we'll talk about both these fungi their life cycles in detail so let us first start with yeast now when we use the word yeast we are actually talking about a unicellular fungus which is used for fermentation as well as for baking and there is one species that is Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is commonly known as baker's yeast or brewer's yeast because it is the same yeast which is used in baking industry as well as in brewing industry. Now it is a typical eukaryotic cell so all the structures are like a typical eukaryotic cell that means nucleus with nuclear membrane all other organelle everything is present there are certain special things in case of yeast the cell wall is made up of chitin phosphoric acid and glycogen so we normally say that in case of fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin but in case of uh, yeast along with chitin there are two more substances which is uh, a different thing. Then there is one more very important and a special thing. There is a big central vacuole. So this vacuole is large and is centrally placed. Now yeast they are saprophytes. Fungi are saprophytes. So the saprophytic mode of nutrition is seen in case of all these fungi including yeast but here yeast they secrete an enzyme complex which is known as zymase it is an enzyme complex and this enzyme complex digests simpler sugars uh, sorry complex sugars into simpler sugars complex sugars or carbohydrates into simple ones and these simple ones are then absorbed. In case of yeast both asexual and sexual reproductions are seen. So asexual reproduction it takes place mainly by two methods. One is budding and in case of budding, a tiny outgrowth is seen on the parent cell and this outgrowth which we call the bud grows to the size where it is able to uh, survive on its own. So it is going to detach and it will start leading its life as an individual cell. The second method is fission where the cell actually elongates, the nucleus divides by first elongation then a constriction appears inside and then there is a plate which is going to separate the cytoplasm. So what happens in case of budding is this suppose this is the parent cell and here is a nucleus though the nucleus is not here it is slightly on one side because there is a large vacuole as we said. The nucleus divides by a mitosis so there are two nuclei formed a tiny bud develops one nucleus migrates here and then this bud will detach and it will lead its uh, life. In case of fission, the cell is going to elongate like this. The nucleus also elongates showing the constriction. After this, the nuclei are formed and a plate is formed which is going to divide the cell into two. So this is the fission method and this is the bud.
herding method both are seen in different species of yeast and there is one more type of yeast which are called helobial yeast and helobial means the ones the yeast that shows asexual reproduction by budding as well as fission. Such yeasts, they are called helobial yeast. So there are three ways in which this asexual reproduction can be seen. Purely budding, purely fission or it could be partly budding and partly fission. Then sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction shows three steps. One is plasmogamy where the cytoplasmic material fuses first then followed by karyogamy or we can write them as separate steps karyogamy that means the fusion of nucleus is going to take place and then there is meiosis so all three steps are seen in case of sexual reproduction in yeast Sexual reproduction can be by hologamy. This is seen when the cells are haploid. That means these two haploid cells which are leading their normal life, they start behaving like gametes and then they fuse to form a diploid zygote and this zygote undergoes meiosis to form haploid cells which would start leading their life. So because these two cells were leading normal life, acting like organisms, and these two complete cells are fused, we call it hologamy, fusion of the whole cell, that's why. But here they are acting as gametes. This is seen in case of the yeast, which are normally haploid, in haploid yeast. And in case of diploid yeast, that means the normal cells are diploid. They lead their life cycle in the form of diploid cells. They undergo meiosis for first, produce gametes. The gametes fuse to form zygote, which is diploid. And the zygote is going to lead its life as a diploid cell. So this is one method. And the second is by gamete formation. So in this case, a diploid cell undergoes meiosis to produce haploid gametes which fuse to form a 2N cell again. Yeast, different species of yeast, they exhibit different types of life cycles. So in yeast we find all three types of life cycles. That means the life cycles which are seen, one, is haplontic that means most of the stages are in the form of a haploid cell only one stage would be diploid the second one is diplontic where it is just reverse all the stages are diploid except for one stage which is going to be haploid and third is called haplodiplontic that means here Half of the life cycle is spent as, is spent as haploid cells and half as diploid cells. So there are three different species which exhibit these three different types of life cycle. So now in the next part, we'll start with these three types of life cycles and we will see which species exhibit which type of.